So you've been surveying um, locum and salaried GPs. W what does your survey tell you about morale in the profession at the moment? It shows us that salaried and locum doctors are feeling the pressure in just the same way as partners and our colleagues working all across the NHS. We know that in terms of rating their morale, salaried and locum doctors say that they score about a 6 out of 10 on average, with 10 being feeling really positive about work and zero feeling very negative. So we're not the happy-go-lucky workforce that maybe some people would have you believe if you choose to work in a sessional capacity. And the other thing is that um, over half of salaried and locum doctors have said that they felt unwell as a result of work-related stress in the last 12 months. So again, that pressure that we're feeling in the NHS, the pressure on general practice, is really affecting everyone. You, you talked in your speech to a conference earlier about the kind of blame that sessional GPs feel you face from, from the system. Where do you think that blame comes from? I think there's a um, challenge in terms of the overall narrative around sessional working and that's whether you are salaried or locum in general practice or indeed in hospital and we've seen the really negative attempts that the government have made to penalise hospital locum doctors, hospital locum nurses and agency staff and really that's translating into general practice as well so this message that anything other than a partner is bad fails to recognise the contribution of salaried and locum staff and also the fact that they're often partners who are being pushed into working that way because of the intolerable workload. It's about a divide and rule within the general practice profession. Who's doing that divide and rule, do you think? I think what the government are trying to do is, instead of trying to pull people back into the partnership model, they're trying to disincentivise and penalise salaries and locum doctors. And so they're trying to promote a split in the profession. And actually what they should be doing is improving things for partners to pull people back, rather than saying, unless you're a partner, it's negative, we're going to penalise you, we're going to make sure that you're paying more tax, that you're financially disadvantaged, that you're viewed negatively, both in the press and potentially by colleagues. And that narrative is not helpful when we're in a crisis. Do you worry, do you think that, that, that many of your GP partner colleagues have accepted the logic of that divide and rule narrative? I think the vast majority of GP partners recognise the vital role that the sessional workforce plays and we know that a lot of people move roles and people who have been salaried and partners are now locuming and vice versa. So I think generally amongst the profession there is a recognition of that contribution. But I can also feel that if I was a GP partner, responsible for all the risks of partnership, working long days, working long hours, worried about my livelihood and the future, I can see how I would feel if actually there's a colleague who maybe has the same experience as me but is able to work shorter hours more flexibly and have that security financially. So it's not about the race to the bottom. We're not trying to say we should all be getting down to the dreadful level that partners have found themselves at. Absolutely not. We should be pushing for our partners to get the best deal possible. So what can the profession as a whole do and what can the, the, the NHS and, and the government do to overcome those divisions? I think as GPC and as the BMA we need to be really crystal clear in our messaging that there isn't a division within general practice, that we support different ways of working, but the most fundamental thing is to, is to support that independent contractor model, to push our resources into that, to incentivise and recognise the work that partners do, because that gives a stable environment for salary doctors to work in with the model contract, and a stable environment for locums to then support those practices and those partnerships when we need it. We do not need to reinvent the wheel.